Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, August 17th, 2018. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results, see what happened over at Catawiki, see what's coming up on the two sites in the next week, and uh, go over a few things that uh, were going on this week. One of the things I wanted to mention was, in case you missed it, we uploaded the catalog for the Baron collection of snuff bottles. It's coming up on September 12th in New York City. Uh, the Barons were phenomenal collectors. They happened to be from here in Massachusetts. They were, uh, 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 Mr. Barron in particular, after the passing of his wife, uh, kept collecting uh, snuff bottles, and they've done a series of auctions uh, of his collection. Just absolutely great stuff. They collected other things, too. They collected Wedgwood. They collected art glass. They collected all kinds of things. He was a, a big uh, uh, philanthropist, he and his wife both, uh, to various causes in the New England area. Um, interesting people, really interesting people. He was on the board of Bowdoin College, a whole bunch of things. But uh, the collection itself is really uh, quite exceptional, and uh, you ought to come over and flip through it if you're a snuff bottle fan. Um, there's a lot of bottles in there. I forget how many lots there are. It's, it's uh, pages and pages of them. And uh, the, the estimates all seem reasonable, and it uh, looks like a heck of a collection. Mo all of them have good provenance as well, going back to uh, uh, old collections and uh, well-known dealers. So it's worth having a look. All right. And the other thing I wanted to mention, we're going to include this in the newsletter this week, is, is the first of a series of videos that was done by Bill Shack, William Shack of Shack's uh, Chinese Art in Hong Kong. He's one of the greatest dealers in the world of uh, Chinese art. He's a real enthusiast. And on this particular video, he's going, to, he's going to be going over a vase, as you can see here. He doesn't speak English, but it's all subtitled. And uh, he, he's a very charming fellow to watch and um, highly educational. I really uh, urge you to, to watch the video. Uh, it's uh, really interesting, and uh, he explains in detail the significance of all the different aspects, what to look for. Uh, really useful. So uh, by all means, um, uh, take a minute to watch those video. That video. We'll be including others um, uh, that we were we tipped off to by uh, uh, a, a well-known uh, auction house um, who, who's friendly with Bill, and he said you ought to do something with these videos. So we are. We're going to put them on here. All right. And now on to last week. What happened? Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was that. Uh, where is this picture? Here it is. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned this pair of vases. You may remember it. it's a pair of Chinese-style export uh, sleeve vases, trumpet vases, whatever you want to call them, from the 18th century. And I pointed out that these were fakes. These were copies. And a couple of people commented saying, well, how can you tell? And they wanted to know more about the foot rims. Okay. And uh, if you examine the foot rims of uh, pieces, uh, by the way, this pair of vases brought $1,200, unfortunately. Somebody really got taken. Um, if you examine these, the, the foot rims of early vases that are authentic um, and you, you compare them to the pictures that this fellow provided here of these, uh, the differences become quite stark. Um, the way this uh, upper edge is unglazed, the shape of the foot, the color of the paste, it's too gray. Um, there's a whole lot wrong with it. And uh, most importantly, when you look at the facial uh, characteristics of these copies, uh, really compare the, uh, them to originals. You can find lots of originals on, uh, on Google. Just do uh, 18th century Chinese export uh, 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 vases or bowls or whatever. And you'll pull up, this is a, a stock pattern that was used on, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pieces over the years, and you'll quickly be able to see the difference between the way these are done uh, with the sort of modern looking faces and more uh, Chinese, uh, typical Chinese uh, looking faces that, from that period. You'll be able to differentiate. But unfortunately, as I said, somebody paid $1,237 for these. Um, Forever Legacy uh, handles some really questionable stuff, so I would uh, be very careful in the future looking at anything they have for offer, okay? And now on to this. This was a nifty little um, uh, 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 tankard, 18th century, uh, uh, Chin Lung period, uh, beautifully done. And it, the only thing it had going wrong with it really was it had a little hairline on the inside, but a very tight hairline. And um, if if you can't afford to spend two or three or four hundred on the real ones, on the on the on other on the perfect ones rather, I should say, uh, this would have been a good buy. This would have been a great little buy because it's a nice form, uh, very beautifully done. The the gilding on it was still quite good. And just so you know that if you have hairlines like this, you can make ninety nine percent of that hairline disappear by just putting the piece in a pot in a vat 
with um, commercial grade 35 percent hydro um, uh, hydrogen peroxide leave it there for about a week it'll soak that out and then thoroughly rinse it for another week and just clean water and <clears throat> that that this black line will disappear and uh, un uh, unless you look very closely, you, you, you will forget completely that it has a hairline in it. And it went very reasonably, $49. That was a great buy for somebody with a limited budget that likes to collect, okay? Just uh, something to think, think about going forward. All right, and then uh, on to this one. This was another tankard uh, that was offered by the same seller. The seller had a bunch of tankards up this week. And this was a nice one. This was a strap handle uh, example with lots of gilding on it, late 18th century. Uh, beautifully done. Nice old tankard. Look at look at the look, nice strap. I love the strap handles on that. And uh, they didn't appear to have been broken, which is highly unusual. Usually strap handles are always check them because they t they're so fragile, so prone to breaking after uh, several hundred years. But at any rate, this went uh, pretty reasonably. $253 for a, uh, uh, a rather unusual uh, type. They said they, they called this um, uh, 1821 to 1850. Um, it didn't look it to me. It looks like a late 18th century pot. I think they were a little off on the date. All right, and then under this, this was another really good buy. Uh, this is a couple of Kangxi Chinese Amari uh, pots that were, were offered. All right, the one on the left is, is, a, is a nice form. Uh, they don't turn up often in the United States. You see these in Europe fairly often. But two very nice ones. They had minor nicks here and there, but nothing significant. And look at this. The, the pair of them only went for $211, all right? That was a very reasonable buy. That was a really reasonable buy. Uh, as, I, as I've said a million times, I'll say it again, you know, Leave a bid, okay? This, this somebody, somebody. I suspect maybe the buyer on this just threw a bid in of three or four, five hundred bucks, and he got him for two hundred. Maybe because it's August too, people are away, all right. But always leave a bid. And then there was this. This was pretty. This is a, a later piece of Chinese porcelain. This was probably made in the twenties or the thirties, but uh, very nice Chinese lantern with uh, Femi June and this nice uh, turquoise green uh, ground. These lanterns, uh, they do turn up fairly often. Um, often they were made into lamps. Some of them, some of them during the 20s and 30s were actually made, and they were made with a hole for the wire to go in. This one was fitted, obviously, onto this stand. All right, but this went very reasonably, $202 for a nice lamp. Okay, um, if you, the, by the way, if you, if if you wondered about these, these are wonderful uh, to use as sort of uh, soft lighting in a, in, a, in a room. Um, if, if, if you don't have one, uh, try to get yourself one. I think you'll, you'll like it. It gives a good atmosphere. And uh, $202, you can't go wrong. Your new table lamp and a department store, a good one will cost you a lot more than that. All right, and then on to this. This is a nice 18th century armorial uh, tankard. It had some uh, roughness here along the edge, but good armorial crest on it, and it wasn't damaged. And again, you know, if you don't have a fortune to spend, this was a, a good thing. These armorial tankards can run 800 to 1,000 to 1,200 dollars pretty easily. This one only went for 363 dollars, which I think was a good buy. I think we're seeing a lot of good buys this month, by the way. This was another thing that was a great buy. Uh, this is a, a very fine, uh, high quality. Uh, Nanking uh, reticulated rim under tray. As you know, often the, the chestnut basket uh, thing goes on top of it. And what was interesting about this was that it had these little panels which were meant to put the, uh, there's one on the top and there's one at the bottom. And these were added so that people could add, add their initials to them in gilt, okay, or enamel at some point. And this one never got finished. Uh, or, or, the, or the initials were never added. So uh, it, I don't know why, but it went very reasonably, $191. Um, it looked like a very good purchase. It was beautifully done. That's top quality work. All right. And then on to this, this nice little uh, Chinese watercolor, a uh, trade watercolor, uh, beautifully done. This is a, a turn of the century type of watercolor. Uh, it needed a new piece of glass, obviously. It somehow got probably probably got busted, you know, being packed or something at some point. But I like the, the sort of rough old gilt frame on it and throw a new piece of glass in it. And you have something very nice. Uh, it came originally, it was done at the old print shop in New York City. The uh, misnomer here is the old print shop sold a lot of prints in New York, but they also sold uh, really good paintings and really good watercolors at times. All right, and this one just went for $204. Nice looking picture, and all it needed was a new piece of glass. It would have been fabulous. All right. And then on to this, this uh, uh, Chinese Amari uh, side handle chocolate pot. Uh, this was a nice, sometimes they call these lighthouse form, lighthouse pots. Uh, but anyway, it was a, a very good one, and it was in quite good condition all the way around. Uh, no no uh, uh, big issues to speak of. Here's the inside. 
There's the top of the lid. There's the mouth, so forth. Had a minor, minor little nick. As I've said before, you often see these nicks under the under the lips of the spouts, just from being handled a lot and, and bumping the edges of things. But uh, this was a pretty good one, and uh, it only went for seven hundred and twenty dollars. And I've seen these 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 um, uh, uh, early eighteenth century pots sometimes sell for a lot more than that. They can go for twelve, fourteen hundred at times, uh, because it's a fairly rare form in these early in these early porcelains, going back this early anyway. All right, and then on to this. This was that nicely done. Uh, it was the, the, the framing around this. This is a Kesey panel, and the framing around it was probably done a little bit later, but uh, very nice quality work. Good quality uh, needlework here, very fine. A lot of gold, a lot of gold ground here and here and here, and that nice soft pink uh, that I like to see on Kesey's. And uh, this was a pretty good one, and it brought $1,036. Um, I've seen them bring more, though, and this was a fairly good size one. So uh, that, was a, that was a pretty good buy. I think August is going to turn out to be the month of good buys, okay? And uh, on to this. This was another one of these mugs uh, that was offered by, this was Orlando Shores, the same people that had the other one. They had a collection of mugs. And this is a fairly well-known type of a, you know, latter, 1800, uh, latter 18th century, rather, uh, export mug, again, with that uh, very stock pattern. This is very similar. If you want to come and look at, you know, you go look at this and compare the way the faces are done and then compare it to that copy of sleeve vases I spoke to spoke of at the beginning, you'll see the comparison, okay? You can compare them. This is what they should really look like, all right? Much, much different uh, textures, much different tones of drawing in the faces, and uh, this is a real one. Here's the side, is this nice honeycomb sort of pattern. And uh, it only went for $177, which was a, 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 nice, a nice purchase. There was a, if you're a tankard collector, last week there was a bumper crop for you. And then on to this. This was that uh, Japanese bronze uh, hand warmer. It was listed as Chinese. I mentioned last week that it's actually Japanese, but very good quality, really good quality. And it looked like it was nice, heavy casting and a good patina. It doesn't look like it had been polished in a very, very, very long time. So you got all these nice, soft uh, 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 sort of patina things going on in the surface. Here's the bottom of it, okay? Here's another view of the top. I love the turtles and the waves. Beautifully done here, the openings. And uh, it went perfectly reasonable. It brought about, what I, last week I think it was up about 200, and I said it'll probably go up to three, 300, 350, 400, somewhere in there. And it went to 355, which is right about right, uh, but a great buy. If it, was Chinese, if it was Chinese in this quality, it probably would have bought double that. Um, but this was a, a nice piece. And uh, if, you, if you enjoy Asian art and you're not you know, necessarily uh, stuck on Chinese stuff all the time, you might look at Japanese things. There's some fabulous quality items out there. And just because of a slow market, um, relatively speaking, the, the, the Japanese stuff offers uh, some great value, tremendous value if you enjoy the art. All right, and then on to this, that nice pair of uh, early 20th century, late 19th, early 20th century flower pots with these footed bases. Uh, this was a nice looking pair of pots, beautifully done, um, sort of in the, uh, a decorated here, a bit like you see on Kangxi from Iver, with, it, with, it, with poems and everything else on it. This was a nice pair of planters. They look great with plants in them. And uh, they went for $1,125, which I don't think is a bad deal. They had them as 18th and 19th century. I think they're pretty clearly mid to late 19th century, but uh, very nice quality. And I, I think that was a, a perfectly reasonable price to pay for them. A pair of planters, and all, and both in good shape uh, from what I could see. All right, and then on to this. This was that nice Wanley uh, dish. They, 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 the seller had listed this as a charger, but it's only about eight or nine inches in diameter, but it was very good quality. Quality of this was very good. A nice deep dark blue uh, underglazed blue uh, uh, coloring and some good outlining. Very tidily done. The potting was quite good on it. Here's a picture of the back. It wasn't overcrowded with a lot of. Sometimes you see these one leapies and they're just crusted with kiln grit. This wasn't too bad. And uh, here's a, a shot of the rim with these these uh, uh, lappet form uh, radiating panels on uh, going up through the cavetto to the rim. And a nice looking plate, and it did just fine. It brought six hundred and sixty dollars, which is which is a good price for one of those. It's not an overpayment because it was a nice example. Some of these can be a little murky and not as interesting, but this was a good one. I liked it. And on to this little figure. This this figure I liked a lot. I just I liked the character of it. I liked the soft, the translucent green, and uh, uh, amber colored uh, glaze, the black hair, and uh, it had minor issues here on the fingers. The fingers on, on these figures, like like Blanc de Chine figures, are often damaged. 
Um, and and the, this was not an exception to that. But this was a nice little figure. It was a good size, good facial expression. Um, here's the underside of it, exactly what you want to see. And I think it went pretty reasonably, $229 for a good-looking figure. And uh, you could probably get those fingers fixed, just so you understand. If you, you should always, if you live in an area and you're and you, and you, you, decent population, you'll probably have a fairly good porcelain restorer within a half an hour of you. You might want to get to know that person. Because a figure like this, you could have those fingers fixed with, with a, a good little porcelain restorer, probably for between... Oh, 60 and 80 dollars they could fix those fingers up and it looked just fine all right a lot of collectors uh, over the years learned to do some of that stuff themselves which is not you know which is quite possible okay something as minor as that all right and then onto this was this very nice again a finger missing this was a nice early 20th century a famille rose uh, a figure of a, 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 a luhan or something and uh, here's the stamp on the bottom nice looking paste nice old one uh, beautiful enamel. I think this was a bargain. I think somebody got this very reasonably, seventeen hundred and thirteen dollars. And you, and I know it sounds funny, very reasonably, but this was a, a good figure, really well done. Um, and in Hong Kong, they sell these little figures for four, five, six thousand uh, dollars, and it's a sort of a rare form. If you're looking at it and you say you haven't seen that before, well, it's because they didn't make a lot of them. This was a particularly nice one. The face on it was really charming. All right, and then we're going to take a look over here and see how things went over at Catawiggy last week. There were some nice pieces that went through. One of them was this very uh, attractive uh, uh, Chinese blue and white dish with the, uh, with the different flowers up through the center, probably Kang Shi period. Nicely done. And uh, it went for uh, a pretty reasonable price, $150, okay? And then onto this, here's a, this was another very nice plate. This is a fairly uh, well-known type of export plate. It had some wear to the gilding. There was a lot of gilding here at one point, and it looks like it maybe got cleaned. It was used, but uh, a, a fairly rare pattern. And uh, it only went for $63. All right, like, you know, it's like eBay. If you see something over there, and you register and get yourself an account. And if you see something over here, throw a bid on it. Um, and even if it's a low bid, don't forget they have a buyer's premium, but just calculate that into your bid. All right, and uh, ditto for this. This was a nice famille rose uh, shaped rim uh, dish, Yongchen period. All right, it's a very pretty plate, beautifully done. Had a hairline in it, as I recall, or something. Um, did it have a hairline? I think it did. Uh, yeah, hairline crack, yeah. But unusual pattern and very good in, in perfect condition. This is a, 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 probably a f five to seven hundred dollar dish and it went for 81 bucks and I suspect largely because it had a hairline in it but a, a nice looking plate very pretty and then there was this this was a really nice pair of um, uh, uh, early 18th century um, Chinese Amari bowls and they were match pair um, uh, very well done, good quality, uh, not a lot of wear issues with them of any kind. And um, here's a side shot of them. There was a nick, that's right, there was a nick under the foot, but that was it. And, the, and these interior foot nicks don't bother me as long as the piece stands up straight. And the pair went for $325. That was a good buy. All right, that was a nice purchase for that pair of bowls, okay? And onto this, this was that uh, uh, Klapmutz bowl. All right. Somebody asked me what a Klepmitz bowl is on the uh, on the comments last week on the YouTube videos here, and um, uh, th this shape here, where you have this this nice 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 slightly uh, turned in foot, a smooth rounded body where the where it goes becomes almost vertical right below the rim, and then the rim kicks out, it verts out like this, and decorated with these panel. That's what they call them, Klepmitz bowls, and it's a it's, I believe it's a Dutch term, but at any rate, um, that's that's what the description means. It's based on the shape of the bowl and the uh, type of decoration, which is nearly always uh, blue and white. And uh, this nice bowl, this was a good bowl, it went for $1,800, a very respectable price. Um, it was not an overpay, it was not an underpayment. Uh, that's what these sell for. They're highly collectible. This one had a Chen Ma mark on it, as I recall. Okay, And this was one of the things I liked last week, and those of you that watch them know why I like this, because it had horses on it. And I love the depiction of horses on plates and on bowls and on vases and in paintings. And uh, this one was particularly interesting because all of the horses were doing different things. And they all had different expressions. They're all, they're like in, in the one in the center here, they're looking at each other. These two are looking at each other. This one is sort of stretching out, looking at the sky. This one is looking off into the background. These two are sort of frolicking. Just a really fun, fun animated thing. 
All right. And uh, I guess a lot of people liked it because it uh, it went for three hundred and ninety five dollars. And this wasn't a very big bowl. I think this was um, and, and, and there's the back of it. It had a mark on it. And uh, what did it, how big was this? It was pretty small, uh, 122 millimeters. So it was, you know, uh, divided by 10 centimeters, about five, five inches, six inches wide. All right. Nice looking thing. OK. And then coming up uh, this this week, there's a, there's a number of uh, pretty good things over here on uh, 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 Catawiki. There's a, a, a nice set of early bowls. There is uh, this uh, nice old, uh, probably the Kung Shi or early Chin Lung plate. Um, there's this. This is very pretty. This is a really nice uh, Chin Lung Cafe au lait ground Famille Rose uh, vase from a garniture set. But this one has a really nice glaze on it, really glossy glaze and nice uh, uh, warm uh, cafe ground. It's not that dark brown ground. Sometimes it can be a little dry looking. This is a good high gloss glaze and it's a nice condition. Okay. And as of right now, it's, it's, it's not up to much. It's about nine days to go on it. And uh, then there is this, this was a, there, I think there are three or four in this pattern. This is a very nice pattern. Uh, occasionally these pairs of these, uh, the big ones turn up at Christie's and they, they sell the big pairs of like the, like the 12, 13 inch charges usually for, you know, two or three thousand dollars. Okay. And this one is, um, uh, is just gone up. It's got six days to go. Um, the starting bid on it's 160 bucks. This one has no damage. It has a minor nick on the rim. So it's certainly worth that. So, you know, go over and hit it for a bid. You might get it for the opening bid, which would be great. All right. And this very pretty Famille Rose, uh, uh, late Yong Shen, early Chin Lung uh, dish with the, uh, with the peacock on it and these, these good deep enamels and this very nice, bright, clear yellow uh, that really sort of sets off the central scene. I like that a lot. And uh, that one's getting some attention. It's already up to $228 and it has six days to go. Okay. And uh, and then there's this 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 is this is a pretty good thing too, it's a it has a, has a, 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 a opening bid of I think a dollar and it's a set of four um, uh, uh, you know early chin lung blue and white dishes with uh, rims that are like almost like shallow bowls they have those nice uh, fairly steep cavettos with the uh, losange patterns going up through the sides and then these these floral decorated rims it's a set of four. All right, they look great on a wall together. And there's five days to go and not much act act activity so far. So there's a, a good buy on there. And uh, on the eBay site this week, we're gonna put up some, uh, there's a very nice robe that's up. And there's some, uh, some pretty good porcelain and so forth. We're starting to see more things come back in from summer. So, um, you know, we hope you check it out. Uh, if you're not uh, 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 subscribed here yet on YouTube, please do. Um, and uh, leave, always leave a comment. Please give us thumbs up. It, it helps us uh, to grow the site more and more. And, um, you know, come over to bidamount.com and sign up for the newsletter, uh, which we update every Friday. And uh, thanks for so much for watching. I went a little long. I was out of the office a lot this week. I wasn't around uh, a lot of people on vacations, and I've just popped in to do this, and I've got some place to be. So have a great week, and uh, see you all uh, next week. And we'll be getting the uh, hopefully getting the uh, auction catalogs up for the New York auctions uh, on the site pretty soon. All right, and don't forget to watch uh, Bill uh, Shack's uh, video. It'll be, be embedded here on the newsletter page, uh, right here next to the weekly video this week. Okay, so go on over and take a look. Thanks so much, and uh, talk to you all next week. All right. Bye-bye.